James chapter 1. Where is the gospel in the book of James? That's a question that the reformers asked. Martin Luther struggled with this. Is the book of James contrary to the gospel of justification by faith? That God treats us just as if we never sinned because he sees us through Jesus Christ, his perfect life, his death on the cross for our sins, his resurrection, his intercession for us as our great high priest. Does the book of James conflict against that? Well, the answer, of course, is no. And let's look at the five chapters in these five weeks and just quickly look at the fact that the gospel is still there in the book of James. Chapter 1, we look at chapter 1, of course the gospel is there. It speaks of being servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 1. Jesus Christ is the focus here. It speaks of this world as a place of trials and we need to be made complete. And that's exactly what Jesus said. He came to this earth to be our saviour, to bring us to completion, to complete salvation and peace with God. It speaks of sin coming from temptations from us and bringing death. This is the gospel. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift from God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we all must die. We are all sinners. But Christ alone is the perfect one. If we are saved, how are we saved? It says there that we receive the implanted word. Verse 21, therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So repent and believe. Turn from your sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. This is very consistent with the whole gospel. And the word is implanted. We're saved not by our works, but by God saving us, implanting his word into our hearts to give us new life. But the question is, are we truly saved? Are we truly believers? We need to examine, we need to examine our heart, we need to examine our lives, we need to examine our deeds. And so it goes on at the end there. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So a change in our heart, from faith in Jesus Christ, what Jesus has done has changed our lives so that we have love in our hearts and also we have a desire for holiness. So there is no conflict with the gospel as presented in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and in the letters of Paul and in the letters of Peter and John. And what James is saying here, James belongs in the word of God to teach us wisdom about how we live now that we have received the gospel, we've repented and believe in Christ. There is two questions here. First, how shall we live? And secondly, can we have assurance of that? What gives us the assurance that we have this new life in Jesus Christ? Well, it's the change. We're not just hearers of the word, deceiving ourselves, but we are doers of the word. Like verse 23, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intensely uh, at his nature in the face of a mirror and then goes away. No, we being saved, we see ourselves in Christ and we don't only hear the word, but we do the word. So the gospel is preserved clearly there in chapter one. Amen.